Supreme, uh, please be seated. In the Hampton Supreme Court, it's now in session. Sort of toughen up a little bit. 
Well, my reaction is that I think it's, it's an unreasonable conclusion to view that in isolation. We're dealing with three years of conduct here. Well, but you say, I, you, you were the one that said in response to Justice Conway's question that that is uh, sort of a boiling up. So that suggests to me at least that the, you know, the, the sort of more routine things are, are less than that. There is a routine <coughs> aspect of this, which perhaps if you view these individual incidents in isolation, they might not be all that bad. But on a regular, recurring basis for three years, and the trial court finding that this was still going on, and that's an important point, the trial court found that this was still going on by at least one defendant several days a week for several hours, and I believe the actual trial testimony from the defendant was three or four days a week for three or four hours. But so there's, a, there's a, a general diminishment of the activity over the course of time. It sounds as though they're all getting a little tired of it for the most part. Uh, there is a change, but I think the core question for the Superior Court, it's really two buckets. Has the city proposed a constitutional injunction? It has. I don't think there can be any reasonable debate on that. And the reason why is because we have clear decisions from the Madison case in 1994, from the McCullum case in 2013. Isn't there a big distinction that, is that those are buffer zones at a sort of stationary place? Here you're talking about, as your opponent points out, you're talking about trying to impose a buffer zone on, on literally what is a moving target, which is, <coughs> which is the uh, the meter uh, uh, enforcement people. There is a moving target, but these are more narrow actually than those cases, because those cases could apply to anybody entering certain areas. We're talking about two individuals, and we're requesting relief that's directly in line with the directions from Justice Roberts. Justice Roberts said injunctive relief needs to be pursued. That's why the McCollum case was overturned. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts did not first pursue injunctive relief. And Justice Roberts admonished them and said, you need to look at this. Injunctions look at the precise conduct by precise individuals, and they get at the core. That's more favorable than broader prophylactic measures like an ordinance or the ultimate chilling effect and arrest. Is it, is it irrelevant that an individual leader leader might have uh, the ability to seek um, injunction, injunctive relief personally alleging harassment some other criminal offense? From the standpoint of the city's interest, I think it is. And the reason being is that the city needed to show to the trial court, and it did, that it proposed content neutral injunctions that were constitutional. We know this because the trial court ruled they were content neutral. It ruled that there were significant governmental interests. Not just that, it ruled that they were ongoing significant governmental interests. I, ta I take it there hasn't been any individual request there is not at this point. Okay. Am I correct in understanding that the city is not trying to stop the feeding the meters itself? Precisely. Our, the injunction the city proposed, and this was the third finding from the trial court, was what the trial court described as the most narrowly tailored that it could conceive of to provide any meaningful relief. Those are the problems that the city had to satisfy. Let me just ask you this How when you say, and I think your opponent, if I remember correctly, raises at least some question on this. When you say this is content neutral, if I'm understanding correctly, you would not, your injunction would not apply. If I if I happen to drive over the key and I, you know, and I park and I stayed over. Uh, whatever the I, you know, I put in enough money for an hour, but I stayed an hour and 15 minutes. And I realized, oh jeez, I better go out there and put some more money in. And I went out while a meter reader was was you know walking in the area. Would I be subject to the injunction? No, you would not. Okay, so so it it sort of depends on whether uh, on what the purpose is, isn't it? I mean, it's, it, it, if if I'm a protester. Then I'm subject to the injunction, but if I'm not, then I'm not. Doesn't that suggest that maybe there is some content to this? No, respectfully, Your Honor, it does not. Um, the testimony before the court from the parking enforcement officers is that they would have problems with this, and I think rightfully so, 
even if somebody was coming up to them every day, this is it's the frequency aspect of this that is particularly troubling. And getting in their face and saying, great job, you're doing a wonderful job, but following them every day, this close, day in, day out, emerging at times that they can't anticipate or expect, getting in their way when they're trying to get to meters, those impair significant governmental interests, significant interests that the trial court recognized. And the problem is that the court finds that there are significant interests in play. It finds that each of the elements that the United States Supreme Court requires are satisfied. And then it says, but I can't grant injunctive relief because it would place a significant burden on the defendants. Well, that's going towards the strict scrutiny test that the Madison Court expressly rejected. The Madison Court looked at this and said, Justice Scalia wants us to impose a strict scrutiny test when we look at injunctions. We're not going to do that. Strict scrutiny would require a compelling governmental interest, and that these are the only way to satisfy that interest and protect it. And they expressly adopted an intermediate standard. And that standard looks at what the burden is. And that's, that's important. There's always going to be a burden when there's an injunction. If the court denies injunctive relief here because it says that there's a burden, well, is it truly a significant burden? I don't think when there's adequate alternate channels for communication. What is, the, what is the harm? I, I guess th this is what I'm having real difficulty with. What is the harm of that is, you know, to the to the parking enforcement people? That is, that they are suffering at the hands of these protests. Well, the parking enforcement officers have sought counseling. And there was testimony in the initial hearings of the stress that they are under that was uncontroverted. And that the city has a significant interest in making sure that its employees are mentally healthy on the job so that they can actually go about doing their job. I agree with you, and I don't mean to be callous, but isn't part of their job description a warning that they may be subject to certain difficulties on the job because of the nature of their job? Yes, Your Honor, it is. And that contemplates individual interactions with individuals. It doesn't contemplate years of recurrent, ongoing conduct. It doesn't contemplate having people wait outside the bathroom for you. That is something that, at some point, is going to wear down individuals. It's therefore going to impair the city's interests. And because the city has articulated those significant interests, the court should not, as a matter of law, deny it on constitutional grounds and say, oh, it's the mental health of the employees that's the significant problem. That is one of the significant interests. And another. Public safety and keeping the stability on the streets that's expressly recognized. It sounds a little vague to me. What do you mean, public safety and stability? In the video that was provided to the court, we have an evidence of an individual who comes in because she's seen a PEO being what I would describe as harassed. And she inserts herself between the PEO and the defendant. That's one example. You mean the old lady on the video? Yes. And in the initial hearings, we have evidence of a fight where one of the members of the public chased the defendants to a parking garage, screaming and threatening them. That's public service. Of course, those people would be able to bring private complaints for protection, right? The individual public citizens or the parking garage? The people who were chased. You said in a parking garage. Yeah, who was chasing who? Yeah, yeah. There was a member of the public chasing the defendants. So it was, so is it? Yeah, this one was. Right, so isn't that, I mean, isn't there some case law that says, you know, the fact that, the fact that some people may react themselves illegally because they don't like what you're protesting doesn't mean to you that that's a reason to stop the protest. No, it's not. I see my time is up. I have to address your question. Please, go The interest here is one that's been recognized in numerous cases by the Supreme Court. Peace and order on the streets is a significant governmental interest that the Supreme Court has held for its injunctive relief. You know, may I just follow up to you, Mr. Bay? I don't mean to personalize this, but I'm just, I'm trying to press where the outer limits are. A million years ago, I personally served in the U.S. Air Force during the Vietnam War. If I wore my uniform and walked down the streets of Boston, I was harassed, called names, whatever. Would there be sufficient governmental interest to give me a zone, some kind of zone of protection as I walked down the streets of Boston? Under the hypothetical you set forth, I would say no. But I don't think those are the factual circumstances that we're dealing with here. Because the harassment was pretty severe. It certainly was more so than I saw in the video. It was, and individuals in service at that time certainly encountered recurring harassment. But these are 
are two individuals facing recurring harassment for three years every day when they go out to work, almost every day now, by discrete individuals. That's something that can be enjoined and should be 